in this lesson we are going to learn how to calculate for the RMS value of this voltage away from very hard here to do this we have to follow some few steps the first thing to do is to calculate for the squared area of this waveform identify the period then divide the squared area by the period then take the square root of the squared area divided by the period and that gives us for the RMS value of what this voltage waveform so let's look at how we are going to do this to do this we first of all have to identify the period which is the duration it takes for the waveform to complete what one cycle so looking at this waveform here started from this origin here and then ended here because at this point it starts to repeat itself okay so this is how this where the cycle ended so we are going to record this value here as well the period so you have the period t to be equal to two pi okay so now what you have to do is to find the area of what the waveform okay you know you have the sine part and then you have what the triangular part okay so i'm going to find the area of what these two waves and then you add this and then you divide by what the period and you take the square root of that and that gives us what the arabic value so let's look at how we are going to do this so first of all i'm going to calculate for the area of what the sine part okay which is the squared area so for the sine part let's look at how the squared area will be calculated the function for the sine part f of x is given us vm sine x okay but in this case x is what theta so we have what f of what theta to be equal to what vm sine of what theta okay so we have to find what the squared area of what the sine part which is what area will be equal to what f of what theta squared which is what i'm going to find what the squared area okay of what the sine part so to do this this will be the integral from zero to pi okay of what f of x squared dx this is what we have now okay so i'm going to find the squared area of, what, of the sine part so this will give us then to go from 0 to pi, you know, f of x is what vm sine x, right? But in this case, you are substituting theta in place of x, so you have what vm sine theta. So that gives us what vm sine theta squared d theta, right? Okay, so let's continue. So this will give us the integral from 0 to pi for vm squared sine squared theta d theta this is what you have now okay so from here i'm going to write the trig identity for sine squared theta okay so sine squared theta is the same as what one minus plus two theta over two so i'm going to substitute this in place of what sine squared theta that we have here so let's look at that so that will be the integral from 0 to pi vm squared multiplying with 1 minus plus 2 theta over 2 d theta. Okay, when I do this, I can write this as the integral from 0 to pi. Okay vm squared over 2 multiplying with 1 minus cos 2 theta cos 2 theta d theta okay this is what i have now okay so from here what you have here is just a constant so you can bring it to you can bring it towards this side okay so that will be vm squared over 2 okay integral of what 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta okay so this is what we have now okay so let's continue 
So now you are going to find the integral of what, what you have here. So that will be Vm squared over 1 to 2. Okay. The integral of this, the integral of 1 here will give me what? Theta. Okay. Then minus the integral of what? Cos 2 theta will give me what? Sine 2 theta divided by 2. Okay. For the interval 0 to 5. This is what you have now. Okay. So what you just what you have to do is to substitute the value of what is 0 and then theta into the integrated function here. Okay, so let's do that. So when I do this, when I put 0 here, this will give me 0 minus what sine 2 times 0 over 2. And that will give me 0. Then when I put pi here, this will give me what? Pi minus what sine 2 pi over 2. And this idea will give me what? 0. Okay. Sine 2 pi over 2 is what? 0. So then we have Vm squared over 2 multiplying what? Pi. Okay. And that will give us what? Vm squared over 2 pi. So that will be the area for the sine part. Okay. So A will be equal to Vm squared over so multiplying what pi that's the area for the sine part so now you have to find the area for the triangular part okay so let's go ahead and do that okay so for the triangular part also f of x will be equal to vm over pi okay multiplying with x but in this case x is what theta so you have a f of x to be equal to vm over pi theta okay so the squared area which you got f of x squared okay we we'll go to what vm over pi multiplying theta squared okay so that was the area for the triangular part okay so you are going to find the area for this right angle triangle part of what the wave so that will be the integral from 0 to what pi because this way we started from that one from pi to what 2 pi and subtract pi from what 2 pi that will give me pi so we can take it to be 0 and then we can take it to be pi okay it's the same thing so we are finding integral from 0 to what pi for the triangular pi which is what f of x squared dx okay and we are putting theta in place of x right so that will be the integral from 0 to pi for f of theta f of theta squared to theta okay so this will be equal to the integral from 0 to pi vm over pi theta squared to theta okay so this will be equal to the integral from 0 to pi vm squared over pi Over pi squared multiplying with theta squared. Okay, the theta. Okay, so this is what you have now. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so doing this, I can bring this values here to the other side of the integral symbol since it will be a constant. So you have dm squared over pi squared okay integral from 0 to pi theta squared theta so i'm going to find the integral of what theta squared here so that will be vm squared over pi squared okay that will be 
theta to the power 3 divided by 3. Okay. Divided by 3. Okay. From 0 to 5. Okay. This is what you have now. So all you have to do is to substitute the value for 0 and then theta into this. When I substitute 0 here, all this will become 0. Now, when I substitute pi, I have vm squared over pi squared multiplying with pi cubed divided by multiplying pi cubed divided by 3. Okay, so this square will cancel out this cube. Okay, so that means what this part is what is gone. Okay, so and then you have what vm squared over 3 pi. Okay, this is what you have now because what this pi squared was has cancelled out this cube here. Okay, so all this side here is gone. So you have what vm squared pi over what 3. So this will be the area for the triangular part. Okay, so let's write that also down. So area for the triangle would be vm squared over 3 pi. Okay, so now let's continue. Okay, so now that you know the area of the sine part and then the area of the triangular part, you are going to add these two areas. Okay, so that gives us the total area. So you have total area. Okay, to be equal to a of the sine part plus what a of what the triangular part that would be m squared pi vm squared pi which is the area of the sine part right vm squared pi over 2 plus vm squared pi over what 3 Over three, so let's find the LCM here. So that'll be two times three. Okay, so that give me six. Now I'm going to multiply this three by what I have here. That'll give me three v m squared pi. Okay, plus these two multiplying this that give me two v m squared pi. Adding these two values here, what you have on top that give me what five v m squared pi over six. Okay, so that be what the total area. Okay, so all we have to do is to divide what the total area out by the period. Okay, we noted that the period was what two pi. So dividing area by the period, we have what area by period. Okay, so that be equal to what five v m squared pi divided by what six. Okay. All this divided by what the period which is what 2 pi, right? So this will be equal to 5 v m squared pi divided by 6 times 1 over 2 pi. Okay, so this will be equal to what 5 v m squared pi divided by 12 pi. Okay, so this pi will cancel out this pi. So then you have what a of a period to be equal to 5 over 12 vm squared. Okay. So this is known as what the mean. Okay. This is known as what the mean. So all you are going to do is that I'm going to take what the square root of what the mean and that will give us what the root mean squared value. So let's look at this. So we now have what RMS to be equal to the square root of what the mean value. Okay. Which will be the square root of what? 5 over 12 v m squared. Okay, this will be equal to the square root of 5 over 12 times what? The square root of what? v m squared. All right. Okay, so this square will cancel out this squared. So then you have the RMS to be equal to the square root of 5 and 12 multiplying what? v m. Okay, and I'm going to write this as well. Vm multiplying the square root of 5 on 12. 
So this will be the RMS value for this waveform. Okay, so let's say we are giving Vm to be equal to 20 volts. Okay, then how about the RMS y to be equal to 20 multiplying the square root of 5 or 12. Okay, let's see what we get for that. So 20 times the square root of 5 on 12. So that gives us 10 root 15 on 3. So that'll be 10 square root of 15 on 3. Okay, so that'll be equal to 12.9 volts. So that'll be the RMS value in case we are giving what D max to be equal to what? 20. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.